Hey there, everybody. Anurubu here. Returning right back to where we left off. Am I recording? My game froze a little. That made me a little paranoid. Yeah, I'm recording. Returning right back from where we left off, and now we're going to pick ally when what are it you comes going to, to do? when it comes to the choice of betraying or allying. Fine, we are going to pick ally. As I, that as was a not a smart move, Sigma. What? I won't forget this. Bro, no, 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 no. I I can go back and erase my mistakes. That's point of the That's the point of the game. Bro? I'll make sure you pay, even if it's the last thing I do. Elapsum semel occasionum, non ipse potest Jupiter reprehendere. Ally. That was actually quite effective and scary. Of the Honestly, escape. it actually scared me, not scared me in a, like, a scared, terrified way, more like, just like, Damn, maybe she is going to remember even though I jump back in time and be like, Sigma, I know you betrayed me in the other timeline. You can't remove that possibility. They were already gathered in front of the projection awaiting the announcement of the results. You chose Ally, right? Are you sure that was okay? Yeah, of course. I did too. You sound pretty sure of yourself. Causality, my guy. Sigma, causality, 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 causality. Don't be so sure of yourself. Oh, it's not confidence. I already know. What? Uh, let's just go have a look, shall we? We'll know pretty quick whether I know whether I knew anything or okay. not. Hmm. Wait, this was a lock. How do we stop Fi? Wait, what the fuck? Let's go. How was that a lock? I wonder what happens if you. Results from round two of the please. She's gonna betray us. She's probably gonna betray us. Ally, ally. Ally, ally. Ally, betray. Yep. Points have been assigned or subtracted accordingly. Please check your bracelet to see your updated bracelet points. So does she betray you even if you don't betray her first? I wonder if she does or not. What the hell, Fi? Why'd you choose Betray? You chose Ally before. So you remember it too. The other round two. Wait, wait. What happens if I chose Ally originally? Now I'm regretting not choosing Ally first. It's like, what happens if I choose Ally originally? What happens here? I'm really curious to know what scene plays here. What? That wasn't even close to the response I'd expected. Felt anticlimactic? Hey, hold on a minute here. You you know? You remember how I chose betray how I chose betray last time in round two? Yeah, of course. Why do you think I chose betray this time? Don't you remember what I said? That I'd make you pay? Yeah, I do remember that. Then this is you making me pay? Yes. Wait, wait. No 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 no, that didn't make any sense. Something wasn't right. How could we both know about an earlier round two? How could there have been an earlier round two? Was it some sort of alternate history? What the hell was I thinking? That was conspiracy theory shit. Even if there was some sort of alternate timeline or universe or whatever, there was no way I could know what had happened in it. No way I could know. At least, I don't think there could be any way I could know. But if I could, then how? I remembered Fi choosing ally and scowling at me when I broke my promise and swearing revenge. So what happens if I choose for ally originally? That was not a smart move, Sigma. I won't forget this. I'll make sure you pay, even if it's the last thing I do. Why did I know that? Perhaps more importantly, why did Fi remember it? What the hell did any of this mean? That happened before, hadn't it? During one of the AB games when I was playing with, against Alice, I'd seen something. Fi and I had chosen Betray, but for some reason I'd seen a reality where we chose an ally instead. Suddenly, I realized that I wasn't alone. I looked up to see Luna, Clover, and Kay. They all began to speak at once. What happened? Why did you choose Betray, Fi? Yeah, you're the only one who didn't vote ally. Fi looked away and scowled. For several long moments, her eyes stared off into the distance and I could see her mind working. 
Finally, she sighed and spoke. Right. Well, I've got nine points now. So sorry, but I'm out of here. Bro, fuck you. Huh? What do you mean? Do I really have to explain it? No. I'm leaving. No, fine. The number nine door. You're the one of the only. You're the like the only person I fully trust here. Don't fucking break my trust. Even though I fully don't understand like how you work yet. Hey, wait. I scrambled around in front of her and threw my arms out. You're in my way. Move. No, I'm not letting you go. What happened to you? I didn't think you were the kind of person who ditched the rest of us so you could get away. When someone betrays your trust, feels like a part of you dies. For me, I guess it was the part that cared. I'm really curious now to know what happens if you pick ally first in this route. I don't think you have even the slightest idea what that feels like. Betrays your- what, what, wait, are you saying- Whatever. Just get out of my way. No, I'm not moving. I see. Then you leave me no choice. As she spoke, Fi bent down. Jesus Christ! Are you a robot or something that shot up into the air and over my head? I spun around to see her standing next to the number nine door, her hand on the lever. You. Nice try. She grinned and tightened her grip on the lever. Bloody Tay, actor Est Fabula. Is this just a bad ending as well? What the hell's that? It's Latin. Applaud. The play has ended. That's what it means. Latin. Wait! Stop! I felt myself speaking before I even know what the words were. Elapsum semel occasionum non ipse protest Jupiter reprehendere. Not even Jupiter can find a lost opportunity. Are you sure this is how you want it to end? What about the nonary game? Zero? The bombs? Still don't know about the truth about any of it. If you leave now, we never will. Is that really what you want? Fine. Fi slowly let go of the lever. Why'd you do that, you Duma? <laughs> That's the achievement I got. Phew. Look, I'm sorry about betraying you. I'm honestly not sure why Forget I did about it. it. This time you chose ally and I chose betray. I think we're even. Uh, what are you talking about? When did you betray her? Are you talking about round one? No, we aren't talking about round one, we're- Just drop it. There's no point. I doubt they'd understand even if you did tell them. Yeah, you're right. Huh? Hmm? I think Clover could understand. You know, morphogenetic fields and shit. Mm -hmm. I don't get it. Well, at least it seems Fi has decided to remain. You've really changed your mind? Yeah, I'll stick around a little longer. Like he said, I can't leave until we figured out what's going on. The AB game will continue until someone opens the number 9 door. If someone reaches 9 BP and doesn't open the door, the game will keep going. Oh man, that's a relief. Why do I get knocked out? No, I hate this hypocrisy. I really hate it. Why the fuck do I get knocked out when I haven't done anything wrong? She literally was about to open the door. I was just standing there, not doing anything, and they were like, well, we can't have you running around with 9 BP, Sigma, and they fucking hit me in the back of the neck. I hate- no, 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 that's hypocrisy, and it makes me pissed off. Why the fuck do I get the blame and get the punishment? Please don't scare us like that again. And for her, they're like, ah, oh, haha, she's changed her mind. Fuck you. The Ambidex gates have closed. Round three. Stark, there is the Ab. Many times as we want, huh? Then that as means. Long as you have the star keys, you can play the AB game as many times as you want. You probably won't be allowed to play it continuously, however. There's a period of time between when the doors open and when the polling ends. Based off the last two rounds, I think it's about 45 minutes long. So you can repeat the game once every 45 minutes or so. Oh, that's right. What? Did Zero Jr. say something about that? As soon as the gates close, your colors can all shut there. Oh yeah, what are your bracelets, guys? 
looks like I'm a red solo. I'm a magenta pear. Me too. Nice. That means we'll be a team this time. I think we'll do great. Y yeah. Who's gonna be my partner then? I'm a cyan pear. They do not appear to be here. I, for instance, am a yellow pair. Huh? Wait a second. Fluna and Clover are the magenta pair, Fian is Fiza Cyan and Kay's a yellow pair. Who the hell am I supposed to partner the up Cyan with? Cyan pair, I imagine. Fi and her mysterious partner. Hmm. How do you figure that? Sigma, what colors are added together to create Cyan? Uh, green and blue, right? What color would you get by adding your red to that? White. Uh, red, green, and blue would be white. I mean, exactly. RGB, literally just RGB. So you're saying the next set of chromatic doors are going to be white? Mm. Yes. How do you know? Because I have seen them. After leaving the archives, we found a warehouse very similar to this one. In it was a set of white doors. Well, okay. to be precise, a set of doors which radiated white light. Ah. So yeah, they they we haven't been to Warehouse B on this timeline. Yeah, I saw him too. After we were finished in the garden, we went to the same warehouse he's talking about. They had the same little lock thingies. I'm 100% sure they're the next chromatic doors. What about the people back in the infirmary? Do they know about the white doors? Yes. If we exclude Quark from their number, then I believe they do. I mean, the only people that didn't know about the white doors are Luna, Fire, and I, right? I wonder what colors they as are. As far as pairs go, we're missing a cyan and a yellow. If Sigma's a red solo, then we should have a green solo and a blue solo back in the infirmary. Makes sense, makes sense. Hmm. Well, I'm going back to the infirmary. I'm kind of worried about Alice and Quark. I'll go too. As will I. Cool. Oh, that's right. Wait, guys. There's something I need to tell you. Huh? What is it? Go on. I meant to say something earlier, but I guess there was just so much other stuff going on. I looked at Fi. She nodded back. See... The truth is... What? What? What's the truth? Wh what? Did it tell them about the extra bomb? Oh no! You found another bomb? Yep. Where? Yeah. In the garden. No! That's not possible! We didn't see anything like that! Could you have missed it? No! No way! We checked every part of that room. Hmm. There was a number on this one, the two, it said zero one. Since the one we found in the crew quarter said zero three on it, well... You think there might be a third bomb out there somewhere? I yep. think there's a good chance. And the fourth one. <clears throat> Very well. We should split up and find this other bomb. It could be anywhere. Yeah, I agree. But even if we do find it, what are we supposed to do? That is a concern for later. At the moment, our primary concern should be finding it. You can't fight an enemy you can't see, after all. Precisely. Alright, I'll head back to the infirmary and let everybody else know. Please. How about we set a time to meet back here, just in case? The time we have left until the chromatic doors open is... Let's see... Just over 80 minutes. Quite a bit, actually. Jesus Christ. One hour and 57 minutes. <clears throat> Nearly two hours. I think approximately half of that should be enough. When we have one hour remaining, we should meet back at the infirmary. Acceptable? That sounds perfectly fine to me, bro. That sounds good to me. Right. I'll tell the others, too. Good. Let's go. Come. I'm really... I wonder... I wonder if we can actually bring up the... Bring up... Um, deactivating the bombs in this timeline. I wonder if they'll let us deactivate just like one or two of them. Or maybe they'll be like, until we have the password for all of them, there's no point. Because, <laughs> I mean, if we can deactivate the, the zero one one bomb, which I have the password for, let's just fucking deactivate the zero one one bomb. You know?
Warehouse B. <laughs> so these are the white doors that Kay and Clover were talking about. Yeah, there's the lock thing. No question, these are the chromatic doors, I guess. So it seems. Ah! What? When did I've you- I've been here the whole time. Seriously? I didn't notice you at all. Oh, I guess your hearing's starting to go. How sad. Ugh. So, what do you want? Why are you stalking me? I'm not stalking you. I just followed you here. That's pretty much the same thing. But how did you do it? You were totally silent. Are you Batman? I already told you I'm not. <laughs> Remember? Back in the AB room when we met? Yeah, actually... <laughs> you also jumped super high all the way up to the ceiling. Right. Aren't you curious about that graffiti? Graffiti? Yes, I am. I very much am. Yes, please, 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 please. Please, please talk about it, please. I'm so curious. I'm so ready. Please, go ahead and mention. I've got my pencil in hand. I'm ready to write down anything you say. Go ahead. I'm so ready. Memento Mori of the ninth line ate the sun. Did the kid write that or what? Why do you say that? They misspelled ninth. Well, they managed to spell ninth wrong. Who puts an E there? You're right. Then mm. again... Then again, maybe it means something. Do you know what it means? The Latin part. Hey now, give me a little credit. Even I know what Memento Mori means. I see it all over the place. As far as I know, it translates to something like be aware of death or remember your mortality. Never forget that we all die someday. I guess it's sort of a cautionary thing. What about the other part? I have no fucking clue. It's exactly what it says on the tin, right? Some sort of conditional about lines and suns? You, you copying Luna's sentences now, bro? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Anything come to mind? No, nothing. Nothing at all. What about you? Me? Huh. Well, let's see. Memento Mori if the ninth line ate the sun. Memento Mori if the ninth line ate the sun. Password, bro. Come on, come on. Dig in deep. We need a password. We need a password. Son, I repeat the words over and over in my head, but nothing. Whatever they mean, whatever they meant, it was beyond me. But perhaps Phi. Huh? Latin. Huh? Don't you know Latin? Maybe you can figure more of it out. Well, I know a little. More than most people, I guess, but I'm not an expert. Then how'd you know that phrase? Lapsum semel occasionum. Non ipse potest Jupiter reprehendere. Oh, that. That's from, um... I mean, this. that's just a proverb, isn't it? Like, it's just something you memorize. She unpinned her brooch from her chest as she spoke and held it out to me. I hesitated for a moment, then took it. Look at the back. I turned it over. Lapsum sem occasionum non ipse protest Jupiter reprehendere. So I guess the I is pronounced like a J in Latin, huh? And the V's are pronounced like U's. Yeah. What is this? A memento of my late mother. Okay. Well, I guess it's something like a memento. Memento mori? What does that mean? She died right after I was born. I was raised by foster parents and they told me where the brooch had come from. Apparently it was the only thing my mother had left behind. Hmm. Sorry about your sad life. What about your father? Don't have one. I guess you could say I was a bastard. Uh, you, you were being one earlier. I never saw his face, and I don't know his name. I'm your father, aren't I? That's gonna be the fucking plot twist. Sigma is her father. I don't even know if he's alive. Oh. I couldn't think of anything else to say, so I just handed her back the brooch. That phrase got to be almost like a prayer for me. Whenever I had to make a tough decision, I'd say it to myself. Sometimes I'd just repeat it over and over like a chant. Before long, I had it memorized. Got me interested in Latin, and I started studying the language. Hmm. Elapsum semel occasionum non ipsi protest Jupiter reprehendere. Not even Jupiter can find a lost opportunity. Sounds nice, doesn't it? But it seems kind of funny now. I mean, look at us. We've done what Jupiter can't. Mm hmm. Hell yeah. We can find our lost opportunities. That's why I followed you here. I thought it would be a good idea to talk to you about all this. Alone. I agree. Alone is the right way to talk about this this topic. This exact topic. Yeah. There's I something agree. else we need to do too, though. Find the number two bomb. Exactly. So we should get going. I'm pretty sure the bomb isn't in here. There's nowhere to hide it. So... 
You're stay you're saying we should go somewhere else? Yeah. Well, come on, don't just stand there. We need to get a move on. Where are we going? Without waiting for a reply, she turned and started towards one of the exits. I followed. Where are we going? Where are we going? Archives? Yep, let's go to the archives. I've been I've been here when I was looking for Alice. Didn't find much. Archives. Good place to hide a bomb. Now where the hell do we start looking? I doubt it really matters. If it's here, we'll find it eventually. So what about that Jupiter stuff? We can talk while we look. Now get started. Oh, let's start looking. I turned to the corner of the room and began to look while Fi spoke. I'll start with the conclusion I've come to. Our consciousnesses seem to be able to jump through time. Yes. No, sorry. Through time isn't really accurate. Okay, what's your conclusion? It's more like we move through worlds. Okay, okay. Parallel worlds, parallel timelines. Yes. Worlds? I don't mean physical planets in this case. I'm talking about a whole different universe, really. Parallel worlds. What? Do you know about the many worlds interpretation? Uh, tell me about it. Well, kind of. I think I've heard about it once or twice. Mm. Oh, well, I'll just explain it. Oh, cool, quick. Let's say... Mm. I don't care what it is, but could you move? Uh, Scratch your head, cross your arms, put your hands on your hips, anything? I had no idea what this was supposed to explain, but I did it, but I did as she'd asked. <laughs> a, scratch head, cross arms, put hands on hips, applaud others. Cheer, blow a kiss, tap dance, moonwalk others. Yeah, let's fucking blow a kiss at her. Mwah. Mwah, mwah. Go feelings, touch her heart. <laughs> she dodged them, that's cold. You did something gross just now, didn't you? <laughs> but you could have chosen to tap dance or moonwalk. Tap dance? Moonwalk? The details don't matter. I'm just talking about possibilities here. Now, maybe there are other Sigmas in other worlds who did all of those things. All of these worlds and realities are branching off from one another. The choices you could have made branched off from the moment you decided what you were going to do just now. Every moment you make a decision, another universe branches off on and on into infinity. Each of those branches is an alternate world. A world where a version of you did something different. Haven't you ever thought about what life would have been like if you'd made different choices? Yes, I, I have very, very, very often in my life. You could say it's the reason I go to therapy. What if you'd gone to this high school instead of that one? What if you hadn't started a study group? What if you hadn't told that girl you liked her? What if? What if? But are those what ifs really just what ifs? Or are there other worlds out there where you did those things? Uh, I've, I've always found these kinds of interpretations like very, very interesting. So I like hearing her like, I like hearing her talk about them in, <laughs> in this thing. Anyway, that's the many worlds interpretation in a nutshell. I simplified it a lot. Doesn't have to be human actions though. I just used your actions to make the explanation easier to grasp. The actions of a cat. The flight of a bee, the movement of a microorganism, even fluctuations in air temperature. All these can change history. Mm hmm Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on a second there. I'll let microorganisms fly, but there's no way that air is conscious of anything. Can you say for sure that you are? All of your what? actions are caused by the cells in your brain. If we go down a little further, then you could say all of your actions are the result of atoms or electrons or smaller particles we haven't even discovered yet. Are those atoms and electrons still you making a decision at that level? How different are you from the air? I'd say not much. Human existence is just one part of reality. Falling in love is like a tulip blossoming. A tulip blossoming is like a tornado forming in South America. See what I'm saying? You've lost me. You've so lost me. The only thing that really matters is the action of the most elementary particles of matter. Okay. That's where history happens. That's where universes branch out.
I am so lost. I, bro, you had hey, me. You, stopped. you had me hooked. You had me like going. And then I was like, what the fuck is she talking about? Are you done with that shelf? <laughs> oh, uh, no, well, not keep yet. Keep while I talk. How familiar are you with quantum physics? Not very much, bro. Never mind, don't answer that. I'll try and keep it simple for you. Hmm. Let's see. Hey, hand me that box, will you? This one? Sure. I handed the box I've been examined over to her. She set it down on the desk and opened the top. Also... Hmm. Ah, there's a stuffed lion over there. Perfect. He's part of Felide, too. Felide? Oh yeah, um... Uh, cat. With that, she grabbed the lion and tossed it unceremoniously into the box. She also took a weight and an ink jar and put them in next to the lion. Alright, everything's ready. Ready? Remember that book in the crew quarters about Schrodinger's cat? It relates to all this stuff I've been talking about. Anyway, come look at the box. What about looking for the... This will only take a minute. <laughs> now look. She's forgotten about the bombs. She just wants to flex right now. I shrugged and peered into the box. What do you see? A lion, an ink, a, a weight, and a pot of ink. Well, there's a stuffed From lion. Now on, that's a cat. Okay. A living cat. This is important. Got it? Yeah, yeah, it's a cat. Meow. Oh no, oh no, Sigma's curse is coming oh, back. man. This again? Sorry, a, a, a cat's help. I find that hard to believe. Ugh, fine. <laughs> Maybe I can just ignore it. For what it's worth, I'm sorry. Alright, what else do you see? <laughs> a weight that's not even a pwned, that's not even a pwned, and a jar of ink. Right. Now the weight is going to be radioactive material, and the jar of ink is full of poisonous gas. What? I'm kitten out of here! Idiot. It's not really full of gas. This is just hypothetical. Cool. Imagine that it's full of gas. So, what's the weight? Uh, radioactive material. Radioactive material. And the jar of ink. It's full of poison gas. Exactly. Good work. Now, there's one other thing <laughs> Thanks you need for to the know labels. about the jar. If it's struck by any of the alpha particles the radioactive material emits, it'll break. These particles are emitted randomly, but there's a 50% chance that one of them will come into contact with the jar over the course of an hour. Okay. So let's close the lid. And pretend an hour has passed. Here's the question. Is the cat alive or dead? Is the cat inside of the box alive or dead? You can't open the box to check. And you can't hit the box. <laughs> Obviously you can't shake it either. It's also basically, you have no idea what's going on inside the box. It's also been soundproofed so the cat could be howling up a storm in there and you'd never know. Do you remember what happens if the alpha particles hit the jar? It breaks, gas will the box and the cat inhales it and death will whisk her away. And what if the jar doesn't break? The cat lives to tell the tale. Haha. Ha. And what are the chances of either of those things happening? 50-50. About 50%. Uh-huh. So, what's your answer? Is the cat alive or dead? I can't possibly know. Then guess. It's not hard. Alive or dead? Um... It's alive. Let's be optimistic. The cat is paused for dramatic effect. Alive! Nope. You're wrong. It's That's dead? wrong too. Then what's the right answer? The answer is that it's in a state where it is neither dead nor alive. What? Why does that make any sense? It's an extrapolation of something we see at the atomic level. We don't know if an atom is spinning upward or downward until we measure it. Before it's measured, those two possibilities coexist, but as soon as the measurement is taken, obviously, only one possibility is the truth. That's what's happening with the alpha particles. Since we can't know when they were emitted or where, we only know the probability that they'll impact the jar. Okay. Because we can't observe anything that's happening in the box, that becomes the entire system. In other words, the box is like the atom. We don't know how the cat's life or death situation has resolved itself until we look at it. Dude, this applies to everything. If I roll a bunch of dice in a glass and I don't, I mean a cup and I don't lift the cup, I don't know what, I don't know what the, the dice rolled and I don't know the number. So it could be all of them. So it's in a state where it's neither two, nor three, nor four, nor five, dude. 
like it's that's for everything this isn't like quantum physics it's just you don't know the answer to something that is a random probability until you actually look at the observations of your of your experiment until we do it's just a bunch of possibilities yes literally it is you get it if the cat in the box is possibilities then it's both alive and dead right so let's open the lid and when we do all the possibilities will collapse into a single truth. Uh-huh. Meow. Nice. What a relief, huh? Looks like the cat's alive. Anyway, that's Schrodinger's cat. That one in the box right there? Damn, I thought it was a real cat. The many worlds interpretation is one theory for explaining that weirdness. So there's another world out there where this cat died? Yeah, that's the idea. Looks like that cat tick of yours cleared up. Yeah, because uh, we're not talking about cats anymore. Yeah, well, your story was pretty insane. insane. You don't think so? Just the idea of something being alive and dead at the same time, and if the moment the lid is open determines whether or not the cat's dead, then it's almost like events in the future can determine the past. I mean, the cat doesn't die when you open the lid, so it must have already been dead. Exactly. You've experienced it, haven't you? What on earth are you talking about? Think back. Remember round two of the AB game? Mm hmm When you chose betray, what was my vote? Ally. But what happened this time? I chose ally and you chose betray. Right. And both times, I put in my vote a full minute before the deadline. When did you push the button? Right before the timeline ended. Right before the deadline. I see. Well... That makes this a little easier to explain. If you chose Betray, then my vote was Ally. If you chose Ally, then my vote was Betray. But I made my choices a whole minute before you made yours. Don't you think that's strange? I really do, yes. I'd, I'd like an explanation. You do see what I'm saying, don't you? That my choice in the future altered your action in the past? Yeah. From your perspective, ah. there's no other way to interpret it. Okay, <laughs> now that I thought about it, round one had been the same. When I chose an ally, Alice had chosen Betray. When I chose and Betray, Alice chose the opposite. Look at this die. I found it over there. Let me give you one last example. As she spoke, she tossed the die into the box and quickly shut the lid. What number is it? Alright, answer this question. What number is the die on? Four. As okay. before. I'm going to open the lid. Wow, nice. Good job. You got it right. Oh, <laughs> that was just a fluke. Okay, does it always give you the right answer, or does it always give you the right answer, or is did I just happen to guess four rightly with the one in six chance? Was it? Huh? Let's think about what was going on before I opened the lid. What number was the die on? Uh, four, of course. Haven't you been paying attention? The die is still a collection of atoms, isn't it? I don't yes. think you can reasonably suggest that it was made of some different kind of matter. No, I can't. Wait, so you're saying that before you open the lid, the die was on all the numbers? Uh-huh. That's one way to look at it, at least. And then when you open the lid, it was just one or number? Or it might have become that number when you declared which one it was. Huh? Wait, what do you mean? Your choice in the future has an effect on the past that's crazy bro anyway that's all i wanted to say we got a little off topic there but i think i made my point reality separates off into an infinite number of branches for each and every possibility you and i seem to be able to jump from branch to branch mm. of course our bodies aren't doing the jumping. Our consciousnesses are. Our consciousnesses just sort of dive into other versions of ourselves in other worlds. And in some other versions, we're absolute dickheads, bro. Whoa, I think I get it now. That, that's how you knew my name, right? You jumped in from another world. <clears throat> that's how you knew all those other things you shouldn't have known. Yeah, that's the best I can figure out, at least. Unfortunately, it seems like we don't retain all our memories when we jump. Maybe we only remember particularly important things. I'm not sure how it works. 
But whatever the reason, it seems to be fairly limited. And often, we don't seem to remember jumping at all. Things will just sort of pop up. That's why when someone asks us how we know X, all we can think of is to just say, I just knew. Yeah. Huh. What's causing this then? I don't remember ever doing this before, so why would it start now? If we knew that, I don't think we'd be having so much trouble. Hmm. It's just... Just what? Well, I'm pretty sure it has to do with why we're locked up in here. There's no way this doesn't have something to do with whatever Zero Senior's trying to do. So you think that maybe the reason we're locked up in here isn't to do with some Radical Six or some shit, and more to do with, like, determining some Esper shit or some, like, timeline jumping abilities or something? And all the background noise of Radical Six and, and disease, virus, whatever, whatever, is just to, like, give it atmosphere or something? I don't fucking know. Why would he have left that Schrodinger's cat book in the crew quarters? Hmm, you aren't kitten, are you? Maybe this is some sort of huge Schrodinger's cat experiment. And all nine of us are locked up inside the box, right? Meow. We all could be dead or alive, and we're both dead or alive at the same time. And what if you've got it backwards? Backwards? We're outside of the box, and the rest of the world is inside. Then the moment we step out of this place... Yeah, we might be determining the history of the world outside. Ah. No way. I had a thousand other questions, but before I could open my mouth to ask them... Oh, good! There you are! Did something happen? Yes! What? We found it! Found what? What do you mean, what? What else could we find? The number two bomb, the bomb, bro. The other antimatter bomb. The number two bomb is in the control room. The one we searched? Is this it? Yeah. This is one of them, all right. And it's number two, apparently. Well, at least we found them all now. No. There could be more. Like Kay said, there might be a number four bomb out there. Or a number zero. No way to know. Number zero. I have a way to know. Did you tell anyone else about this, Clover? Well, um, not really. But, uh, I wasn't the first person to find it. Who was? Who was? Kay and Luna. After they found it, they came to the infirmary and told the rest of us. Who was in the infirmary? Everyone. Except? Tenmyoji and Dio were there. So were Alice and Quark, of course. Although they were still asleep. So everyone who wasn't asleep knows about the bomb. Yes. I see. Yeah. Then there's nobody else here, though. Where'd they all go? Right after we came here to look at the bomb, they all left. Oh? They were going to go look for you two. What about Alice and Quark? They're the same. Still sleeping. We checked them out just to be sure, but they seemed fine. That's fine. Just keep them sleeping. We'll we'll carry them through the next set of chromatic doors. That's good. Fine, I looked at one another and let out a small sigh of relief. <clears throat> oh, right. I checked everybody's bracelets when we were in the infirmary. Did you want to know what they were? Yep, please tell me. It took her, it took her only a moment to explain. Alice was a green solo. Orc was a blue solo. Dio's bracelet made him a yellow pair. And Temyoji was a cyan pair. So what are our options for the groups? The next set of doors to open are going to be the white doors. That means we'll have to mix our colors so that we get white. Option A. Pilot out what that would mean. Option A. Fai and Temyoji Cyan would pair with me red. So I'm going with Fai and Temyoji. Cool. K and Dio yellow would pay, pair with Quark blue. Clover and Luna magenta would pair with Alice green. Huh? There's only one option? Yep. Yeah. Any other combinations don't make white. What about Alice and Quark? Luna said it's going to be a while until they wake up. We'll just have to carry them. Cool. The secondary doors won't open without three bracelets. And if we can't open them... Yeah, we'll get penalized. Exactly. Don't worry about Alice. I'm on her team. Are you saying you can carry her? Yeah. Well, I can get Luna to help me. Yeah, cool. Two people can carry her. True. I'm sure she'd be happy to help. Mm-hmm. What about Quark? He's on Kay's team. There shouldn't be any issues there. Uh-huh. Kay's a massive guy. And Quark is a very small guy. I wonder if we're gonna get to I really want to deactivate these things. I wonder when we're gonna get the chance to deactivate these things. 
So need to figure out what we're going to do with about this bomb because we finally have the deactivation device. But it looks like we're not going to be able to use them in this timeline, bro. So we need to figure out what we're going to do about this bomb. Alice said we should be safe as long as it's not triggered with the remote. Maybe, but we can't just leave them here forever. I mean, if they go off, then everything in like a couple hundred kilometers is going to get fried. Yep. Wait, a couple hundred kilometers? What are you talking about? That bomb should only have about, about as much explosive power as a ton of TNT. Sigma, my guy, the bomb is right next to an antimatter reactor. Which is nothing to sniff at, but that's nowhere near the kind of yield you're talking it about. Could be. What if these bombs are just, like, the detonator? Oh, oh. You mean there might be a bunch more anti-hydrogen around here somewhere? Yep, right over there. The reactor. Yeah. There are supposed to only be 18 antimatter reactors in the whole world. If that's one of them, then there's a lot of anti-hydrogen. How much is a lot? Three and a half kilograms. Yikes! Three, three, three and a half kilograms? That's like 10,000 more than Alice's 350 milligrams. If there really is that much, and if it does explode, then we would be looking at an explosion roughly 10,000 times more powerful than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. That is a yikes moment, my guy. That's a big yikes moment. No, that's, that's insane. At least it's not a nuclear bomb, you know? At least it won't have nuclear fallout. It'll just be a big Wait, explosion of energy. Well, how did you know that? At least it'll just be a big explosion of energy that gets it destroys everything and then just fucks off, you know? The, the worst part about nuclear bombs isn't the in immediate... It's not the immediate destruction and death. It's the fact that it poisons the world around it for the next, like, I don't know how fucking long, like 30, 40 years? I don't even know if people are going, like, if... I don't even know if Hiroshima's being settled again or not. No, what? That stuff about antimatter reactors. Um, well, that's, a. Uh, during my training, they... Training for what? Uh, Soy. my job? Ah, of course. I didn't realize waiters these days needed to memorize how many operational antimatter reactors there were worldwide. Or how much fuel one of those reactors might be storing. You don't work at a cafe, Did do you? Did you hear about that from Alice? Yeah. Oh. Well, um, she's right then. And why are you using antimatter reactors at a cafe? That's, uh, what we call the coffee machines. This is the worst lie I've heard in my life. What? Are you fucking with I'm me? I'm telling you the truth. I work at a cafe. This is a lie, bro. This is the worst. This is literally a worse lie than like when a child is holding a broken thing in their hands that didn't break by any other means than saying I didn't broke it. I didn't break it, mommy. I found it broken. No, bro. This is the worst lie I've heard in my life. It just might um be a kind of fake job to divert attention. I think they call it a cover. What? Then what's your real job? I'm sorry. I really can't tell you anything else. Why not? It's classified. No, 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 Fi. I think we shouldn't push any further because if we do, we all end up committing suicide. The government? Classified by who? The government? That's right. Alice said it was a job to eliminate enemies of the state or something. So you two do work together. Uh, oh no! Check your bracelets. How much time do we have left? What are you talking How about? How long until the doors open? Come on, quickly! 55 minutes. Damn. We were supposed to have met up five minutes ago. I'm heading back then. Remember, we're supposed to meet at the infirmary. Yeah, cool. Let's go. Let's go to the infirmary right now. You guys hurry back, okay? Bye. Bye. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. You haven't. Damn it. And she's gone. Fine, she's right, you know, we need to get going. Hold on. I need to check something really quick. Ah, uh, what? Oh, there you are. You're late. What were you doing? Nothing. When we arrived, everyone else was already back. Ork and Alice hadn't left, of course. They were both sleeping soundly and any trace of the madness we'd seen earlier long gone. Clover told us. You've seen the bomb in the control room. Yeah, with our own eyes. So what the hell should we do? 
That makes three bombs. Well, we have to do something. They're bombs, for God's sake. There's a quick and simple solution. Really? Remember what Alice said? There should deactivation. be an deactivation yep. password. If you enter that password, the device should, well, deactivate. The thing is, I think there's four bombs in total and we only have the password to two of them. I mean, halfway is good and is really good, more than zero, but it's not full, you know? And the one I think we should worry about the most is the one in the control room right next to the reactor. Like, the ones here in these rooms might blow up and cause a lot of damage, but maybe they won't affect the reactor, you know? But the one in the control room, that thing's fucking killing us all. You see it? Right here, there's a port. If we can find the password input device, we just connect it here. Then we can enter the password. So, if we have the password, we can deactivate them? Whoa, whoa, hold on a second. That's great and all, but we need that password input device she was talking about. Without that, we're still boned even if we did have the password. We have the password input device right here. Not a problem. We've resolved that issue. Huh? Show them. I nodded and pulled it out of my pocket. That was in the safe in the control room. <laughs> exactly. We didn't have any idea what it was at first, but Fi figured it out. After Clover left, we tested it. Turned out I was right. It fit perfectly. Couldn't get it to do anything though. Plugged it in. F uh, we plugged in a random couple random characters, but all we got was an error. Still, I'm sure this is the thing Alice was talking about. We just didn't have the right password. But why was it in the control room? Do you think Zero Senior put it here for us? Yep. That would suggest it was also Zero Senior who set up the bombs. Doesn't that seem odd though? Zero Senior wants us to play the nonary game, right? Mm -hmm. So why would he set bombs? Maybe he wants to blow this whole place up if someone commits some crazy violation of the rules? That doesn't make sense. Our bracelets already have poison in them. Maybe that he just wants to cause a big scene, you know? Not just kill you, but everyone else as well. If someone breaks a rule, all he has to do is activate their bracelet. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Well, whatever the case is, there's one thing we can be sure of. Which is? The person who set these bombs is one of us. Yep. Whether or not that person is also Zero Senior isn't particularly relevant at the moment. But what is relevant is that they know the deactivation password. Yes. Come on, come on. Are we going to find out? Are we going to unlock this thing? Who planted the bomb? I want to unlock that. If we can figure out who that person is and question them... We can get the password and turn the bombs off. Yes. Exactly. That would be my quick and easy method. So fess up. Which one of you set the bombs? Why would they tell us, bro? Dio? Luna? Not that I expect you to do that. Controller? My controller ran out of battery. Sorry, just give me a second. Just need to plug it into my PC instead of using it wirelessly. Can you work, please? Thank you. So, we're going to be checking everyone. Oh. Checking us? Yes. Once they're set, the bombs are controlled by a remote. It stands to reason that whoever set them has that remote. So, you're gonna search us for it? Yes. But... Sorry if you heard something weird, I was just muting my mic because I needed to sneeze. No buts. But, no buts. If you refuse, that implicates you. Mm -hmm. Do what I say and you'll be fine, assuming you are actually innocent. Understand? Yep. No reason to wait. Let's get started. Anyone want to volunteer to go first? No? Alright. Let's see. Sigma... Wait, huh? you only need to search one person. What? No, Why? not the same lock. No, not the same lock. I don't have the answer. I do not have the answer. Why do they? Why are there two locks in a row? This is bullshit. Because I figured out who did it. I I know who did it. The words were out of my mouth before I even realized I was saying them. How can you? There's no way. Yeah, I met Fi's gaze and nodded and turned away. I know who set the bombs. 
That person is all of us. Is it going to be all of us because of Schrodinger's cat? Something like that. You did it! The room was suddenly silent. To be continued, lock number nine, boys! Same fucking lock as last time. Yep. So I have to I have to figure out who set the bombs to unlock the same fucking lock. Uh bruh. Wish to write to save, yes. Okay, cool. How long is this video? Fifty minutes, okay. That's a decent length for a video. Okay. That wraps up all the timelines. I yeah? Every single timeline has gone as I've I've exhausted every single possibility and done everything, and I am finally like done with all the possible timelines. Who planted the bomb? Who planted the bomb? This is awesome. I actually feel so satisfied. There's, now all I need to do is do these locks. I'll do them from left to right. So wait, this this one is done, right? Okay, cool. So what do I need to do? I need to find the password, but I think this password is going to be lost. I think this is like the last thing we're going to do. I'm just assuming. Cool. How can find KB save? If we unlock that, we can go do that. Is it, there is enough antiviral medication. We've unlocked that, we can go do that as well. We've already done this one. Already done this one. We, I mean, not already done. This one's locked. So, okay. Right now we have only two options, cool. The only two options we have right now is um, how can find K be saved and also there isn't enough antiviral medication. I will be going here. How can find K be saved? Jump there. And I'll end the episode right here. Shit. <laughs> nice. Cool, everybody. Thank you very, very much for watching. I'm loving this game, and I'm loving you guys. Well, everybody, I'll see you guys next episode, where we find now we've finally gotten to the point where we're just going to be wrapping up the locked timelines. I'm so excited, and by wrapping these up, we're going to unlock even more locked timelines, and it's so, I'm so excited. The mystery, I'm just, I just can't wait to unravel the mystery of everything. But yeah, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Bye!